What's up, everyone? April Dunham here. It's time for another Template Tuesday. This week, I'm going to showcase a community template which helps you to provision teams. This solution is built entirely in the Power Platform. In this video, we'll learn how we can connect to the Teams connector within Power Apps and how we can call the Office Graph within Power Automate. As always, we'll show the solution first and then break it apart into key learning concepts. But first, here's the intro. This Teams provisioning solution is built by one of the Power Apps community members, Vivek Bavici, aka That API Guy. I've taken his starting point with this template and tweaked it just a bit to add a few other touches. I'll put a link to his blog post that shows his step-by-step -step guide to how he built the solution. And in his blog post, you can see a link to his GitHub with his original code. And of course, I'll put a link to my GitHub with the template with the modifications that I've made to it. So let's start by playing the template so we can see what it's doing and what it looks like. So we'll open up our Teams provisioning tool, Power App. It's a really simple app. So you come here to this landing screen. You can see which teams that you're already a member of and have access to. The whole goal of this app is to help you apply governance to your Microsoft Teams environment. So oftentimes, in order to help curb Teams sprawl, a lot of companies will restrict who can create new teams. Now that can be a double-edged sword because you don't want to make it too restrictive and have that inhibit adoption of Teams, but you also want to make sure that you're applying some governance to it, like enforcing a naming convention, enforcing certain setup policies. So a happy medium that a lot of companies do is they restrict it, but they allow a request mechanism to easily request a new team. So that's what we're doing here with this Power App. This is a way that users can come in, see which teams they're already a member of, request a new team, and then that can go through some kind of approval process and be created according to certain governance policies. All right, so now that we understand the goal of this application, let's walk through it again. So we can see our teams here and we can click on one of these and this will actually open up Microsoft Teams and take you directly to that team. So there's some integration within Teams itself directly in the Power App. And then the important piece, we can request a new team. So I come here to the request screen, I can put in the title, which would be the name of the team that I want to be created, put in a description for the team and maybe why I'm requesting it. Then I can choose if I want this team to be public or private, define who the owner should be, and put in any members. And I can submit that request, takes me here where I can see my pending request. And then in the back end, this is where a flow is going to kick off. So we have this team request approval flow. And before we look at that flow, actually, I'll just show you the back end data source for this. This is all built on SharePoint. So you can see that new request here from my Power Addicts team showed up in the underlying SharePoint list. And this flow is kicked off when a new item is added to the SharePoint list. So I can see it's running right now. If I go into it, We'll see that's the trigger when an item's created in the SharePoint list. We're just initializing some variables and we're sending out an email to either approve or deny the request. So if I go into my email here, click approve. And if we go back to Power Automate, look at our flow, we see that we're just checking the outcome of that approval. And then we'll see that I got a message letting me know that my team request was approved. So if I switch back over to this Power App, do a refresh, you see that now I have a new approved message. So I can see this, our Power Addicts team was approved. Here is the owners and the members. And I can click on that and be taken directly to the new team that was created for me. And we'll just take a peek at the members. So I can see it did set it up correctly. Here I am as the owner. And if I expand out members and guests, there is David as the member. Let's take a look at the app. The main thing that you're going to learn from this template is how to work with the Teams connector in Power Apps. Now the Teams connector is still in preview, so just be aware of that. But you can just come in here to your data sources menu, search for Teams, and click on the Teams connector to add it into your Power App. And how we're using this in the Power App is to surface up the list of Teams that you're a member of. 
So to do that, we're going to go here to our app on start, and you'll see that we are creating a local collection called My Teams, and we're calling that Teams connector and using the get all teams method. That will return all of the teams that the current logged in user is a member of. And then we just have two variables here to store the current logged in user's information and their profile picture. If we look within this gallery, we're just pointing that to our local collection that we created on the app on start. But then if we go in here, you see that we have an HTML text. So you might be wondering why I'm using HTML text in here instead of just a label. Well, for one, I want this to be a hyperlink. So if I did just a label, we'll just go ahead and add one in here so you can see. The problem with labels are you can't really tell if you want to make that launch something that it is a clickable link. Now you can go in and make it kind of look like a hyperlink by coming in, adding an underline, changing the color to the typical blue that you would see. But you'll notice if I hover over it, I don't have the typical cursor that lets me know that that's a clickable link. That's the benefit of using the HTML control because you can put in a, a tag, which is a true hyperlink, and that gives you this cursor so that the user knows that this is in fact a link to somewhere. So I just put in a, a tag, which is a hyperlink, did some styling on it, and here in the href, which is the link that we wanted to open, I'm calling that Microsoft Teams connector again because I want to get the URL of the team in question. So I can use the get team method, pass it in the ID of this current item in the gallery, and then get its web URL. And you might be wondering why we need to do that. Well, that's because the get all teams method with the teams connector will only return three properties, the ID of the team, the display name, and the description. It doesn't give you the actual URL of the team. So that's why we needed to do that extra call to the get team method, pass in the ID to get the web URL. And then for the display field, I'm just using the display name, which is the name of the team to surface up here. Now that's actually all the interaction with Microsoft Teams that's going on here in the Power App itself. The rest of the work is being done in Power Automate. So this Power App is really just a shell that's going to write an item to the SharePoint list when you click Submit. This is just a form control on here that's bound to our SharePoint list of Teams request. And that submits the item once we click on that. And then from this point on, the flow does all the heavy work. So let's go take a look at that flow now. As I said earlier, this gets kicked off when an item is created in that SharePoint list. And the reason that Vivek did it this way is because if we were to execute this from the Power App, then the graph calls would have to run in the context of the user who submitted the request. Now, obviously, the people submitting these requests wouldn't have the access needed to provision new teams and call the graph to do so. So by offloading that here to the flow, you can have an admin who has that necessary access to provision the teams and call the graph and the flow will run in the context of that admin so everything will work. So that's actually pretty clever implementation here. So after we trigger this flow, we're just initializing some variables. So this will store here who the approval should go to. So obviously you can change that to whoever you might need to be. So you can hard code it here. You can put in multiple. Um, maybe you could change it to feed off of a SharePoint list or a group. It's really customizable, whichever you need. And then we're just going to define some arrays to store the owners and the members. And then if we expand out the scope, we're just going to append to those arrays the owners from our request and the members from our request. Now that we have all those variables out of the way, we need to do the actual approval email. So we're just going to send that. In this case, I have it hard coded and give the options to approve or reject. And then we have a condition to check on that outcome. Obviously, if it's rejected, we're just going to send an email to the requester letting them know it was rejected, update the status to reject it, and then the process finishes. But if it's approved, that's where we need to call the graph to create the team. The first thing you see we're doing here is we're using a compose and we're putting in the format needed to create the group request. 
So this bit of JSON just formats the request in the way that the graph will need it with the display name, whether it's mail enabled, the nickname, visibility, all of those different settings. So you see that the first step in this is to create a group because Teams rely on Office 365 groups in the back end. So we need to create a group that the team will belong to. So we have the JSON block here. Now we're using the Azure AD HTTP request action to go in and make a post request to the Office graph and pass in the outputs that we just formatted above. So this will create a Office 365 group for us so that we can bind our team to it. And we're going to need this group ID to create our team. So we're outputting that here in a compose. Now here you see we have a piece for get governance settings. This is something that I added to this template. I wanted to make it easy for an admin to define different governance settings that they want to enable for their team's creations. So in SharePoint, I have another list called Teams Governance, and it's just a selection of yes and no options for the different Teams Governance settings that you might want to specify. So for example, do you want to allow members to create channels, yes or no, um, delete channels, add members to a group, um, allow GIFs, memes, and all of that. So you can go through, create one record in this list that defines all of the policies that you want to adhere to. So the flow can then go and look at the policies that you have set here and create and provision the teams based off of these policies. So I'm just using the get item property to manually get the one item that I have in that list that has the governance settings. So once we have those governance settings, we need to format the request body that we're going to pass to the Office Graph to create our team. So this is where all of those settings will be defined. So we just need to format the JSON and then pull in the values from our SharePoint list. So on allow create update channels, pull whatever the value is from our SharePoint list there and just map those different properties accordingly. And then this is where we do another HTTP request to do a put to call the Office Graph and create a team within that group we just created in the previous step and create it with these properties that we defined in this JSON in the previous step here. And at that point, the team has been provisioned for us. So now that all that's left to do is to notify the user with this send email action that their team was successfully created and update the status to approved. I thought this template was pretty interesting because I talk a lot about how you can embed your Power Apps within Teams to make Teams applications, but this is another spin on it to use Power Apps and Power Automates to actually help you provision those teams. So kind of like another spin on Power Apps, Power Platform, Teams integration. Another big shout out to Vivek for this great template. I'll include the links to download these in the video notes. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.